Okay, on this edition of Videos with Chuck, we're going to talk about site survey. Site survey. Site survey is something we have to do no matter what project we're going to work on. Even if it's a site that hasn't been built yet, we can go and kind of check out the environment, see what we're looking at. So, things I need to do on my site survey. Well, first thing I need to do is know where I'm going. So, I map out where I'm going. This is one of the parts that I actually like to prep and get ready to do so I have an accurate timeline of how long it's going to take to get from my, my work area, from my designated headquarters, to the actual job site. I log this into my site survey documentation. Once I get on site, there's a lot of other things I do before I even go in the building. Where do I park? Does it cost for parking? Uh, how long does it take to get from the parking area to my actual site? All of these things are very important when you're trying to think about timelines, when you're trying to think about your project management, your work breakdown structure, and your logic network diagram, and all the things. You want to make sure you include these times in your site survey. Okay, now meat and potatoes. Once I get in and start to evaluate my facility, there's a couple things I really want to make sure I do. Accurate information. Accurate information. They always say a picture is worth a thousand words. It really is. There is no substitute for a good picture. One of the things that I like to do for my site surveys is if the client allows it, take little videos. Take videos of walking into the environment from the place I meet my point of contact or from the entry to the actual room. This saves a lot of time in the long run uh, having technicians not having to guess where the room they're going to be working in is at. So I will put that in the job folder. Uh, other things I want to do. Uh, look at the needs analysis that the initial meet has talked about. Look at the things that if they want to do a big boardroom, when I get there I want to check the lighting environment in my boardroom. These are things I can't really do over the phone with the client. Uh, so I take my light meter, hold it up on the wall, take lighting measurements. I want to take my sound pressure level meter, get accurate ambient noise measurements in the room, and I want to document this. Uh, there's a couple apps that I like to use and uh, I think apps are a great way to do things nowadays because you can hold so much information. There are so many things you can think about during your site survey. Uh, the construction of the walls, construction of the ceiling, what floor we're on, all of these questions need to be asked. Now I don't know about you but I forget sometimes in the midst of doing things to gather all the information. This is why I like to use a checklist and the checklist will keep me on track. It's like using a grocery list when you go to the grocery store. You know, how many times have we gone to the grocery store and you're thinking, hey, I need to make a good dinner tonight and I want to get this thing and that thing and then you get home and you're like, holy cow, I forgot the corn on the cob. So we want to make sure we don't forget anything. So using these checklists are a great way to make sure your site survey stays on track and you gather all the information. <clears throat> Other things I like to do. Document the area that we're going to be working in. Not just the size of the room, how wide the room is, how deep the room is, how tall the room is, if there's any obstructions in the room. Uh, also, I want to list on that drawing which way is north. So later on down the line, if the room is square and you say put the display on this wall and you go in and all the walls look the same, we know which way, depending on north, south, east, and west, the display is going to go. It's going to go on the north wall. I can take a little compass and go boop that way. So I document this on my site survey. Um, a picture is worth a thousand words and as you see on my drawing here I have a little napkin CAD so to speak of my uh, room. That's great. You can document what the room looks like by just drawing it out. I use an app. Nowadays apps are great. They do a bunch of things. I like to use an app to document the room and actually make it a drawing. And one of the things that is really, really good about this is I get the measurements all on one piece of paper. I get obstructions or tables I could drop in on one piece of paper. I can look with my client and say, hey, does this look accurate? Is this where all these tables are going to go? And I can send that to my designers. They have a much better view of what the room's going to look like, of what the uh, measurements in the room are going to look like. If the tables are so high, I can put that on the drawing. I can make little notes of, I took ambient light measurement here, and it was this much on that small drawing I made. Um, what I really want to concentrate on, on my site survey, 
is things I can't just ask the client over the phone. And I know you can say, oh, what are the length, the width, the height, et cetera, over the phone. That's great. Uh, ambient light, ambient noise measurements. Most clients don't have these in their back pocket or they don't have the meter. So I want to go out and do this uh, and take these measurements when I get there. Uh, some of the other things I like to list on my site survey, locations of outlets, and I'll take pictures and put them with my drawings. Uh, if I can measure the power ratings of those outlets, some of the outlets you can look at in the U.S., if they just have the two blades, it's usually 15 amp. If they have the, the outlet that has the, the two prongs, one's bigger, one's smaller, and one has a little notch off to the side, I can uh, kind of look at that and say, hey, that's a 20 amp outlet. Uh, I can ask the client if I can see the breaker box, the, the, the uh, electrical panel, to see what circuits go where in that room, to s figure out really how much power I have in this space. So there's a bunch of things I need to notate. Again, having that checklist on, that, uh, on an app or even on a piece of paper keeps me on track with trying to get these lists, keeps me... Um, organized, keeps my thoughts organized, keeps all of my site survey time efficient. When I'm not sitting around thinking, well, what other things do I have to get? I can just look and say, hey, I forgot this thing. Let me grab it real quick. Um, another good reason I like to keep apps and checklists, uh, because I can make this site survey list. I can go over it with the client to see if there's anything else that might affect my installation or the installation process, the access to the room process. Uh, I notate things like, is there a loading dock? How high is the loading dock? Is there an elevator? What's the size of the elevator? What times can we get in the building? Are there any security measures? For live events, I did a bunch of live events where we'd have to load into ballrooms and uh, places in hotels and whatnot, and you have to load in through a loading dock that goes through a kitchen. Uh, I would like to video this walkway and I could see things like there's a six inch lip between this room and that room. That might not seem like a lot, but when you're trying to lift double 18 subs through a door that are just wide enough to go through the door, that six inch lip gets to be kind of hard on your back. So if I can notate that, I could do something like bring a ramp, small ramp, boom, saves everybody's back. I can notate that on the site survey and Technicians can just bring a ramp. Now we don't have to lift everything. We can roll it. These are all the things we need to uh, put on our site survey checklist. So in the long run, when you're going through this checklist, this will save us time. This will save us labor. Uh, a lot of the times this will save us on the back end of the project, knowing that we had all these things on the front end of the project to do. We don't miss things. That lowers your client's bottom line on labor hours, that lowers your company's bottom line on how we save money, how we are most efficient when we do our things. That old saying, a stitch in time saves nine. If I put an extra stitch in time, that's going to save me nine stitches, right? If I do more at the front end, if I plan properly at the front end, my back end goes smoother. And the more planning I put in, just that one or two hours of extra planning makes several man hours of the overall project more efficient. I could save man, many, many man hours by just putting in a little bit of extra time, a little bit of extra planning. Now your site survey checklist, if you haven't used a checklist before, site survey checklist, you're going to start with a couple small things. Don't, don't be scared. You're going to miss some stuff. It's okay. We're humans. But the important part is after you're done with the project, you go over it. You say, what did we miss? We missed these things. Hey, let's put those in the site survey checklist for next time. And that site survey checklist should be a living document. It should grow. As you grow as an installer, as a designer, as a company, as your process grows and your project life cycle grows, that life cycle should become healthier. Just like any kind of process improvement, it becomes healthier. The more you do it, the more consistency you have, the better you get. Then for the next project, you put in these things that are that you figured out and it just makes it better and better and better. After a while, 10, 15 site surveys down the line with this process paperwork, with these apps, with this checklist, they get to be very, very accurate. You get to be very, very good at it. And that's our money saver right there. When we don't have to figure out, man, we forgot this hardware or 
we needed an extra ladder or we needed to have GFCIs and had to go out to the uh, ground fault circuit interrupters as required by some construction sites and we had to stop the project and go out and get it. If we just put it in the beginning, need some of those things right at the beginning, we could take them with us. We're more efficient. It's a time saver. It's a money saver. It's a frustration saver. So the more accurate a site survey you have, the smoother your project will go. And the better you get at this, the better your process lifestyle will be in the long run. Uh, if you have more uh, thoughts or questions about site surveys and, and how do I do a site survey, some of these apps you can see. Uh, I highly recommend our Design One or our CTS prep course. We talk about site surveys in them. I go into, uh, into depth on my process and how I use these things, how I make these apps work together. And uh, hopefully, when the next time you got to do your project, you take a little checklist with you, just a little one. You start small, make it bigger and bigger, and as you go along, uh, after a few projects, you have a nice comprehensive checklist for what you need for your project. Your installers, your designers, your salespeople will all be on the same track. Everybody rowing the boat the same way, and our projects get done faster and more efficient, and uh, we make more money because that's, I mean, that's what we're here to do in the business of making money and maybe making a happy client. So site survey benefits you, benefits everyone on the team, and in the long run benefits our client. So uh, highly recommend taking a look at Design One CTS Prep. And if you have any more questions about site survey, check it out on avixa.org forward slash education.